Uh, all of us know, of course, that you're the great granddaughter of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and that uh, you remain very close to him and to his spirit, and that uh, you've declared that uh, your one of your missions is to continue the Eisenhower legacy. Um, and uh, it struck me that uh, in a very, very powerful statement, written lecture and public statement that you delivered at this summit, which we're going to provide a link to, uh, uh, to an article in the video description so people can really read this and get the full impact. Uh, you say, quote, there has been a massive cover up in regards to ET contact with our governments. And there has been much secrecy in regards to those who have been either abducted or contacted. And this is the key, you say, this is because an invasion has already taken place and they don't want us to know this. you I mean, that's the clearest that I've ever heard anyone say this mm -hmm. about an invasion. Could you walk us through all of those thoughts? Yes. Well, I mean, the galactic history, um, I mean, there's so much to it. And we're dealing with a lot of galactic wars, angelic wars that took place even before this planet was formed, this planet that we know it as Gaia. Um, and so I've studied a lot about that. And in the formation of this new creation, it was uh, pretty much hijacked immediately. And um, we're dealing with, you know, reptilians that ended up going underground, not um, necessarily malevolent, but then those coming from the Draco star system and uh, just how the Anunnaki and the Luciferian rebellion um, is a part of the enslavement of humanity. And we hear all these stories about the Anunnaki with Enki and Enlil and all these different projections and theories about, you know, what their intentions are. Enlil has been somewhat demonized as being the one who created the flood and Enki is out for our good because he wanted to protect humankind. But what is really protecting humankind when there's an enslavement agenda? So we're dealing with beings that actually want a large population in order to control it. And then other factions that want to um, somewhat create population control. And then the reptilians that went underground that were a part of the original creation that just see this huge mess and probably want um, it to be rectified or uh, brought to some kind of justice. And so we're dealing with many different species and the invasion part of it would be the manipulation, the mind control, the uh, dark technologies that want to control nature, want to control humans, um, anything from the aerosol spring and, you know, harp technologies to um, what we see in the media and what we see coming from religion and governments. You know, this, this mass manipulation where most people don't even recognize what's going on because it seems to be a part of just the human experience and it's that level of manipulation and control that I would say is the invasion that has been in the works for um, thousands and thousands of years and so when we deal with something like the Illuminati or um, some of these shadow government institutions there's many factions and they're kind of doing this infighting but they're all vying for control of the human race. It's not really about our sovereignty. It's not about allowing us to see what the truth is so that we can all discuss it and know what we're voting for and know what we're putting our attention on. Instead, it's like we're kind of hanging on the outside as the byproduct of all these games and we're just being sort of like caught in the middle like some sort of tug of war. And the invasion, I mean, we can look at it like some sort of alien invasion or we can see it as a... Um, the role of what the negative ego plays and how we've attached ourselves to it and how we're enabling this. And so when we see what's happening in our world, you know, we have to look at the signs, we have to recognize uh, what's obvious, you know, particularly looking up and seeing that we're being sprayed and do something about it and not just sit there and assume that um, our best interests are being looked out for. And even though there's, you know, factions within these groups that are trying to help us, there's too much criminal activity going on for us to stand on the sidelines anymore and that was my intention is to say it's going to take the whole human race and it's time to put all this out there 
regardless of what the outcome is or who can handle it or not handle it, it doesn't matter anymore. We have to all be a part of this discussion. We have to unite with the ones that are on our side. We have to call out the ones who aren't, give them an opportunity to either unify with us or, um, you know, we need to have them shut down what they're doing or, you know, just like you with your, your deep understanding of law, bring justice to this, this, this issue we're dealing with, these many issues we're dealing with. Now, now you start out by going to a series of secret treaties that started around 1933, both in the United States and in Nazi Germany. Could you talk about all of these developments? Yes. When we hear about treaties, we very often only hear about treaties with Eisenhower. And in fact, um, the treaties originated with Roosevelt um, and also Hitler. and what they both encountered was the Pleiadians and both were turned down by the, both the Nazis and our American government um, in favor of the Greys and their technology. For the Nazis it seems that they got the mind control technology and for the US government it seems it was more about you know metals and alloys and free energy and things that would just improve our life but it wasn't until Project Paperclip after the Second World War got into you know the American government that the mind control technology came and that's where uh, Montauk and other projects started to become infiltrated and the technology you know was used um, in somewhat of a negative way I think originally some of these technologies were to help us with the potential threats um, as a form of defense and a lot of these defense industries have been infiltrated and now it's just about you know who's using these technologies for you know control and um, and I also feel that the Zionists and the Nazis are within this shadow government and they're somewhat on the same team, kind of like sort of a chess game between themselves that we're on the outside of. And it was funny because right before the talk, I just kept having my inner voice, you know, say, checkmate. This is your checkmate. You know, this is your chance to corner them and just say, this is like game over because if we're going to have any part of the game, it's time for the game to be over with. And so, you know, when we look at the treaties originating then and the amount of infiltration that happened by the time Ike stepped into office it's not very clear you know if it was even him that signed the treaties people like James Casbolt who now you know is, is somewhat somebody I, I might not necessarily want to quote but he has said that you know these were cloned humans all that aside when we look at other whistleblower testimony what the main theme seems to be is that this was not about signing a treaty it was more about surrender and that the Nordics weren't necessarily turned down it was that they just weren't able to reach an agreement with each other because there were so many different viewpoints and because the shadow government had already been established and MJ-12 had already been established it was more that infighting that we're seeing which didn't enable a very concise decision to be made and in that indecisiveness the Greys ended up coming in with their technology and we didn't have any way to defend ourselves and um, but it was all planned out this way. This is the thing with what we're dealing with. This isn't, you know, some sort of spontaneous thing and, oh, whoops, we made a deal and sold ourselves to the Greys. I mean, this was all strategically planned and it connects with the Rockefellers and the Bilderbergs, you know, so that these exchanges would happen and uh, it would be maybe blamed on somebody like Ike or somebody else. But um, it was all a part of the strategy all along. So, so that what you're saying is that the the various technologies that started coming in in the 30s both on the on the Nazi side these are the these are the Draco the Draco technologies on the Nazi side and on the US side uh, uh, that manifested as mind control and that manifested as other advanced technologies that the rollout of these in our time space, society here this is really the impos this is the invasion this is the ET invasion that we see now through harp and what you call the tablets of destiny supercomputer system is that what you call that, that that's how the ET invasion is taking place right and then it links back to the mythologies and, and stuff about the divine feminine and the galactic history connected with the Orions and the Syrians and the Anunnaki and that all goes into such great depth that I try and uh, really put out there in my presentations it's sometimes just a huge amount of stuff to try and articulate in a few sentences but from what I've understood 
um, when we're dealing with you know the the Roswell crash and other crashes that took place, and you know all the different technologies that were um, exchanged for abductions, and you know using human genetics in order to help a dying race, which is what they said. You know they're a dying race and they need our assistance, and that they would only abduct a few. We have to look at my labs and the fact that the military, you know, got involved and started to clone or create hybrids or create these automations that appeared to be real abductions. And I think that's what ended up getting out of control and why there are so many abduction scenarios is because of the military involvement. But when we're dealing with these greys, we're not just dealing with extraterrestrials, we're dealing with future human selves that have time traveled back that are trying to keep a life cycle alive rather than be on the ascension path where they wouldn't need our human genetics, they would have connection to spirit be the regenerative quality of being able to keep their race alive, which is what we as humans have access to. And so we have a choice right now whether we're going to turn into greys by kind of giving ourselves over to these control agendas, whether it's through ignorance and not realizing it or just kind of giving up and um, you know, not taking a stand, or we have the ability to be these advanced beings that we truly are that do not need to time travel back to take our own genetic material. And so to me, this is what the shadow government does and all those that they have gathered into their um, agenda in order to stay um, somewhat immortal. And that's their way of cheating, um, I guess, facing the karmic backlash of, of, of their negative and evil ways. Yeah. Now, in your statement, uh, talking about the, the, the ET invasion that, that has happened that the governments don't want to talk about, you write, um, uh, it, uh, a whistleblower states that the military industrial extraterrestrial complex is currently using a Tablets of Destiny supercomputer system that includes the HARP aerosol chemical.